welcome to GNN, Greater Syracuse Association of Realtors News Network. Hi, I'm your CEO, Lenore Fetko. I'd like to start by introducing our guest for today, Ryan McMahon, County Executive. Hi, Ryan. Hi, hey, Lenore, how are you? Very good. We're very honored that you'll take the time to speak with us today on GNN and uh, answer some questions that are relative to the housing industry and our members and uh, as we go forward through these trying times. So uh, one of the questions I have, Ryan, is now that we're in phase four, um, how do you see things going forward with our county uh, going on into the future of 2020? Yeah, I think when you look at that, I think we look at it through a couple different lenses. One being, uh, how are we doing with the, with the public health and uh, our consistent uh, you know, challenge of living with this virus and making sure that our infection rates stay low. And the second being, now that we have people back together again, what kind of economic activity are we seeing uh, and kind of uh, starting to focus in on the economic recovery of this pandemic? So uh, the first part, uh, we actually have seen the data through each phase get better, with the exception of maybe a bump in the road last week uh, being the you know, the week after the 4th of July holiday. Uh, leading up to the 4th of July, we think we had more people kind of participating in gatherings. That makes sense, uh, but not, uh, we have specific clusters that were really driven by some of our uh, teens uh, where uh, maybe they were not uh, physically distancing as much and not wearing masks. And that drove uh, a spike in cases. Uh, and so one mistake can really lead to a, to a cluster of cases uh, and can keep us busy for 7, 10, 14 days. So overall, our data has gotten better related to uh, cases per day on average throughout Restart. Uh, and, and I attribute that in large part to people being at work in the business community doing a nice job uh, regulating and uh, making sure their employees are working in a safe environment. Uh, so overall, we're in a good spot uh, with uh, our, our testing, our tracing, our hospital infrastructure is uh, in a really good spot. Uh, and that lets you focus more on making sure once you hit those metrics that you get these industries going. And certainly the economy is still a little soft, but we've been very lucky in our region that some of our marquee projects uh, that were started in 2019 uh, have not been uh, delayed or uh, essentially blown up because of the pandemics. So uh, our logistics facility at, with Amazon we have two large investments by Amazon in our community uh, that is driving construction jobs now and will drive uh, more job creation uh, next year. Uh, then when you look at JMA Wireless 5G manufacturing going into the near south side of the city of Syracuse, you look at Bankers Health Group with their project in uh, the Inner Harbor. These are all uh, huge projects that uh, haven't been impacted by the pandemic. So that's, that's a good sign. All good, all good news. So Ryan, as realtors work with buyers and sellers, what can they do to continue to keep people safe through our pandemic? Yeah, I, I would just, uh, best practices, and I know you guys have been great doing that, and I know that uh, we, we got you guys uh, in, in some of the earlier phases to get going, but uh, certainly uh, physical distancing works. We know the virus can't, uh, what we say, swim in six feet of water, uh, so staying six feet apart is important. Uh, when you can't be six feet apart, masks. Uh, certainly one of the things we want people to be cognizant of as we get into the late fall, when it's your typical flu season. Uh, think about this, Lenore. Last year, in the peak of this pandemic, when we started seeing cases, uh, we, we had a lot of people who were testing with flu-like symptoms, but only 8% of these people had COVID. So 92% of the people were sick it was something other than COVID. So what can we do uh, by sanitizing, washing our hands even more frequently than we already did? Uh, in April of this year, uh, of 2020, we had no cases of influenza A and B, and the previous year we had 80. So we attribute that to the, the hand sanitiz uh, sanitizing our hands, washing our hands uh, really multiple times a day. Uh, that's critical to keep yourself safe and your clients safe uh, in this process. And, and that's the key is we can't go backwards uh, with this pandemic. We can't be on the sidelines for 60 or 90 days uh, like we were in the beginning. Uh, we know what works. We know the playbook. We've been running it and we've been having success. Right. So 
um, what are you hearing out uh, in your world in relationship to commercial real estate and the fact that more of us are working at home and succeeding at it? Uh, are you hearing that there might be some changes in commercial real estate and in the space that is necessary for businesses? I think everybody's taking a hard look at it. And I think uh, in the short term, we probably will see a, a negative impact on commercial real estate. Uh, I know within our own buildings here in county government, these weren't built uh, for physical distancing. Uh, your elevators, where you get on elevators in our building, uh, it's a petri dish for COVID. Uh, so I think in the short term, uh, having people work at home, if they can be efficient and effective, uh, businesses will, will lean on that. There certainly are certain uh, employees that do certain things that they need to be together. Um, so I, I think that will have an impact on, co or on commercial real estate. At some point, we're gonna have an antiviral treatment, we're gonna have a vaccine, and then businesses will make a business decision on whether they want everybody together or does it make sense for them to have some folks at home. Uh, and productivity will drive that discussion. Uh, but I think right now, maybe uh, you know, some small bumps in the road for the commercial real estate market uh, to a degree. Uh, but there's others uh, who, who may, for example, uh, in county government, we're, we're pretty compact in our buildings. We may de-densify and actually become tenants in some of these buildings uh, as a response to COVID. So uh, there's pros and cons with this pandemic and with this virus, uh, and that presents you know, unique business opportunities as well. Right. Might have sped up some of the decisions some folks made uh, would make in the future, but they're making them now. So the last time we heard from you um, as a group was March 3rd, and you talked about the great things going on in our uh, county, as well as the mayor talked about what was going on in the city, also positive. And then unbeknownst to us, you went right to a uh, press conference where you talked about the pandemic. And I, I wonder on a personal note, could you talk a little bit about what you've learned in your new career? Um, You've been uh, serving the community for a very long time. And prior to that, you were a uh, member of GSAR through the mortgage industry. And so you've been one of us. But now through this pandemic, uh, what have you learned? Yeah, yeah well, it, it's really been an amazing experience. And uh, the challenge um, and the, the emotions in this process uh, from uh, the, the fear at every level uh, in the process. There's been a lot of fear and a lot of stress in the community. And I can feel that directly uh, via our communications. And we really look at our role outside of uh, planning and preparing for uh, this emergency, implementing mitigation uh, techniques before we had uh, cases, uh, building up testing infrastructure, uh, then working on the response uh, and, and then planning for a restart and now planning for recovery. That's part of our job. We didn't anticipate having to do this uh, with the 100 year pandemic that we're in, but uh, we really viewed our role as being one as a kind of communicator in chief and to communicate with the public uh, really what's happening at the local level. Uh, and so that w was very difficult and we did press conferences every day for a long period of time, and we still do them a couple times a week now. But when you're talking about people being very sick and you're, you're talking about people making mistakes and then getting sick, uh, these are all things that are uncomfortable. Um, you know, people weren't trying to get sick with this virus, but uh, we, we had a new set of rules that we had to live by uh, to really flatten the curve and then bend the curve. Uh, and then obviously uh, uh, getting up and, and talking about people losing their, their lives uh, many of these people weren't strangers to us. Uh, we had families reaching out to us. Uh, I knew personally many of these folks. Uh, and then I felt like I knew them because I became uh, friendly with their loved ones. So these are just things you don't think about and prepare for. And then when you think about when we were essentially uh, in a voluntary shelter in place, we were uh, in, in a situation where uh, folks were at home, kids were out of school, uh, the impact it has on your own personal life and your own family. Uh, I, I was spending most of my time with my extended family being my staff as we really dealt with this, you know, 24 hours a day. So, uh, you know, the impact on my own children uh, was something that, you know, uh, w was real. And, and, and I could see that. 
uh, and uh, the challenge of my job led me to have to put the pandemic first, even before my own family for a period of time. Right. Any final words for our realtor membership on how they can support you and the county? Um, anything final you'd like to say? Yeah, I would just say that you're our ambassadors uh, and we really appreciate what you do. I know what you do very well. Uh, and there is opportunities now for our community. Uh, we, we have very large investments being made here in central New York and up and down the thruway in upstate New York. Uh, in addition to that, uh, Business Insider uh, has looked at communities in each uh, section of the country as to a post-COVID world, what are people looking for and what are great places to live? And Syracuse, New York is the number three spot uh, out of, uh, according to Business Insider, uh, for all of the Northeast. So there's opportunities here when you look at repatriating manufacturing, when you look at people maybe not wanting to be in these very, very large cities, but wanting that, that urban downtown environment, but with uh, great neighborhoods uh, in, in, in great suburbs. And that's what we have here in Onondaga County. When you look at our natural resources uh, and, and all the uh, recreational opportunities as well. So uh, you're our ambassadors. You have a lot to sell. Uh, sometimes we need to re remind ourselves of that, that we live in a very special place uh, in the world. We do. We do. So on a final note, I want to personally thank you. Um, you know, I know a lot of people were looking forward to Ryan's report every day. And no matter where I went or how old, um, there was a fellowship and a genuine uh, care that they knew you had for them. And uh, so many of us are watching, you know, the National News Network and seeing a lot of the politicians make a lot of political moves and statements. But for what I saw was you being you and taking care of your community. So I want to thank you from the Association of Realtors. We're always here, uh, as you say, to be uh, uh, to promote anything that we need to to get us through these tough times of, of the pandemic. So thank you, Ryan, for everything that you've done. Thanks, Lenore, and I appreciate it. Until next time, thank you, GSCR members, and please stay safe.